In this lesson, we're going to have a look at trig equations in the form of sin x equal to sin y. Our third type of equation is where we have sin theta equal to sin alpha. So here, the trig function on the left and right are both the same. So this can be cos or tan as well, but the angles are now different. Before we start looking at an abstract example, I want you to have a look at this given example. Using your calculator or your known angles, you can go and calculate that sine 30 is equal to a half. Now we have our standard form, and this means we can go and calculate our reference angle, and that will be 30 degrees. Next, we can split it up into the quadrants where sin is positive, so the first and the second quadrant. And in the first quadrant, we will have 30 degrees plus k times 360. In our second quadrant, we'll have the reduction formula 180 minus the reference angle plus k times 360. And if you look at what we calculated now, you will realize that we did a bit of unnecessary work because the reference angle of 30 was given right at the beginning in our equation. So when the trig function is the same on both sides, that angle that is given, whether it's a constant or a variable, can immediately be used as your reference angle. Let's go and have a look at an example where that angle is a variable. Example 1. Determine the general solution of tan theta plus 10 equal to tan 2 theta minus 30. Here we have an equation where the trig function on the left and on the right is exactly the same. And therefore we can accept that the angle that was given there on the right will then be our reference angle. And that means that our reference angle will be something abstract and not something that you can calculate using your calculator. And now we can continue following our normal steps using this abstract reference angle. So our next step will be to determine the quadrants that we're going to work in. And here we are working in the quadrants where tan is positive. So that will be the first and then the third quadrant. Next, we are going to add our correct reduction formulas. So when we start off in our first quadrant, the angle that we want to calculate is theta plus 10 degrees. And our first quadrant does not need a reduction formula. So it's simply equal to the reference angle of 2 theta minus 30. And we add our k times 360 degrees. In the third quadrant, our angle of theta plus 10 is calculated using our reduction formula of 180 degrees plus our reference angle and the reference angle is 2 theta minus 30 degrees. Our final step is to simplify and because we have an abstract reference angle there will be a bit more simplification to be done. So here I'm going to move my thetas to the one side and subtract 2 theta on the left to end with minus theta and subtract 10 on the right, so it's minus 40 degrees plus k times 360. And then I have to divide by that negative to get theta, and that will then be 40 degrees minus k times 360. And similarly, in my third quadrant, I'm going to get all my thetas on the left and end with minus theta is equal to, and on the right, I'll have 140 degrees plus k times 360. And once again, I need to divide by a minus to end with minus 140 degrees minus k times 360. Example 2. Determine the general solution of cos theta equal to minus cos of 2 theta. So here, once again, we need to realize that the trig function on the left and right is the same. And therefore, 2 theta can immediately form my reference angle. And now... Different to our previous example, here we are working with cos is negative. So in my next step, when I break up into the quadrants, that will be where cos is negative. So that is my second and my third quadrant. The next step is to then add the correct reduction formulas. So for my second quadrant, I want to calculate theta. And the reduction formula is 180 degrees minus my reference angle of 2 theta plus my k times 360 degrees. And in my third quadrant, to calculate theta, I will have 180 degrees 
plus my reference angle of 2 theta. When I now simplify, I want to add all the thetas to the left hand side. And that means in my second quadrant, I'll have 3 theta equal to 180 degrees plus k times 360. And to divide by 3 now, I have to divide all the terms by 3. And that will give me 60 degrees plus k times 120. And in my third quadrant, when I get all the thetas to the left, I will have minus theta equal to 180 degrees plus k times 360. And again, I have to divide by minus and I'll end with minus 180 degrees minus k times 360. Example 3. Determine the general solution of sin theta plus 20 equal to cos 2 theta. So here we have sin and cos, so you might think of using type 2, but the angles are different. So we can only change into tan of theta if the sine function and the cos function both have the same angle. So when the angles are different, like in this case, we need to make a new plan. And that new plan is to manipulate one of these two trig functions to become the same as the other trig function. And for that, we need to remember that sin and cos are cofunctions. So cos of theta is the same as sin of 90 degrees minus that angle theta. And sin of theta is the same as cos of 90 degrees minus theta or the complement of theta. So in example three, I'm going to keep the left-hand side written in terms of sin. And then I'm going to change my right-hand side so that it's also written in terms of sin by saying 90 degrees minus the angle of 2 theta for cos. And this one extra step ensured that we now have the same trig function on both sides. And that means that 90 minus 2 theta can be my reference angle. Our next step is then to divide it up into the correct quadrants, and that's where sin is positive. So that's the first and the second quadrant. So in my first quadrant, when I want to calculate the angle of theta plus 20, there's no reduction formula needed. So it's simply equal to the reference angle of 90 minus 2 theta. And for my second quadrant, the angle theta plus 20 is equal to my reduction formula of 180 degrees minus that reference angle. Here it is important to put that reference angle in a bracket because I need to subtract the whole reference angle and this helps to ensure that I don't make sign mistakes. In my first quadrant if I now move all my thetas to the left I'll have 3 theta equal to 70 degrees plus k times 360. And in my second quadrant, I'm first going to multiply that minus in. So I will have 180 degrees minus 90 plus 2 theta. In my first quadrant, I still need to now divide by 3 right through. And I'll end with 23,33 degrees plus k times 120. And in my second quadrant, I still need to subtract the 2 theta on the left. And I'll end with minus theta is equal to 70 degrees plus k times 360 and then I just need to divide by that minus again.